In this video, I'm going to share with you why I am super excited about emerging markets, the relationship of emerging markets to the US dollar, and why I believe the third world will quickly catch up with the first world. Who doesn't have something made in a third world country? China, Indonesia, Taiwan, even Mexico now. These are countries that are quickly de developing into manufacturing powerhouses. But most importantly, because of the relationship of the US dollar versus emerging market countries, we're seeing a rise in emerging market countries and a devaluation in the US dollar. In March 23rd of 2020, the US dollar went as high as 103.96. It's highest in, well, since the housing bubble. And why this happened was because of the COVID crisis, the pandemic, and the des desire and need for US currency. So what happened was countries throughout the world who hold, held US treasuries sold their US treasuries or exchanged them at the Fed window for US dollars. Because the world was shutting down and countries still need to pay their bills and most transactions are done in US dollars, there was a de um, demand for US dollars. And so the supply shrank and the dollar rose. So since March 23rd of 2020, the US dollar has, well, retraced. And as of this morning, uh, 10 months later, the dollar is now trading at 90.44 or basically 90 cents on the dollar. Now, yesterday the dollar rose and those that things that were correlated or oppositely correlated to them went down. So for instance, our number one headlines in the financial industry, cryptocurrency took a beating. We saw that go down but the dollar went up. So this correlation to the US dollar has presented some incredible opportunities to invest into. And I believe for the long term. And so this correlation move has presented opportunities in the commodity industry. So oil and gas is one of my ex ones I'm excited about but also copper and corn and many others. But one of the areas that has been on a drought for, well, since 2011 or so, is emerging markets. Now, emerging markets over the last, what, 25, 30 years, have become a very big part of our support system. And what I mean support, manufacturing. An enormous amount of jobs have gone overseas, textile industry. I remember meeting with a, a client early on in my career back in 2000, 2001, where he explained he just lost his job because of the textile industry, his job going over to China because they could do what he, his company did for pennies on the dollar. Along with the textile industry, many other industries have gone overseas. Steel industry has gone over. Um, a lot of car manuf some car part manufacturing has gone over. I mean, we all have something, and we're buying always buying something that is made in China, Indonesia, and Mexico, and many other countries. And I believe the opportunity is in emerging markets because of technology. We're seeing these third world countries make a major move and growth. We're seeing them adapt new technology that they can build out quickly and we're seeing them quickly speed ahead of our development. I mean, look at some of these countries that already have 5G technology. China being a prime example. I hate to harp on China because everybody harps on China. Oh, China this, China that. They're the leaders in emerging market growth, but there are other countries such as South Korea, Indonesia, um, Russia is a big player. 
And with the US dollar devaluing, Russia, a commodity oil and gas country, has all of a sudden exploded to the north side in the last 12 months. The opportunities, I think, going forward, especially with the administration that is coming into office here in the United States, is presenting an opportunity for that move out of the US and into bigger opportunities like emerging markets. Most likely, we'll see a continuation of the US dollar being devalued. Us printing more dollars, putting more quantitative easing out to get our economy jump started, to get it going again. But in turn, it's devaluing our dollar, which for you and I as consumers is a form of inflation. Our dollar is not buying as much as it used to. And as more goods are continued to be manufactured overseas and not here in the United States, we're going to feel that, inf that inflationary environment take up, you know, beat up on us a bit. Recently, well, in the last, I would say, what, three or four years, Thomas Friedman wrote a, a book called Thank You for Being Late. And in the first part of the book, it addresses the exponential growth of, or exponential sp uh, speed growth of the main uh, chip industry. So like the you know chips that go in your phone or in this com com camera or in our cars. And what it, how they explained it in the book was that if you look at a chessboard and for every little square on that, every square, so if you start on, on the right side on one side and then go over every square basically doubles well in the book he ex explains that we're only halfway through the chessboard and you think about the technology and how chip manufacturing and the speeds that we're able to process data at has exponentially grown in the last well 10 years 20 years and it's even getting faster I mean, every cell phone or uh, computer is getting faster year after year because of that exponential doubling of each year of microchip processing speed. And it's going to continue. Well, take that information and apply it to a third world country like Brazil or Argentina or Indonesia or South Korea or anyone, Russia, whoever you want to pick that's more of a third world uh, level country. And what you're going to discover is they can take this exponential growth in technology, build out their infrastructures and quickly catch up with us first world countries. The biggest challenge for emerging markets is capital. A lot of these countries are, well, they're third world countries and their governments are corrupt. So having that capital to build out the infrastructure is really key. This is where I believe private money will come into play and start filling, fulfilling the need for capital to build out infrastructure. I mean, if a company such as, I don't know, Facebook, Amazon, any of these major corporations, and even small companies, can go to really intellectually smart countries like India and build out that infrastructure there at a lower price than it is here, well, it makes sense that if they can inject the capital, they can grow and help support that growing emerging market country. Capital is a big challenge for a lot of these uh, third world countries because they don't have a lot. But because technology is driving down the cost of, you know, as technology develops, we're seeing, you know, I mean, think about it. the first computer we, I ever got was an IBM with a big, what, five inch floppy disk. And it was a $5,000 purchase. Today, that computer's worth $10. I mean, the processing speed of that computer is just, you couldn't imagine. I mean, think about the first time you ever got on the internet back in the early 90s. I mean, it was AOL and dial-up, and you sat and waited for things to download. You could go make dinner, come back, and you may have your item downloaded on your web browser. Today, technology has changed the game in everything. 
And where I believe the opportunity in emerging markets is infrastructure build out. Because they don't have the legacy assets that we do in the first world, they're able to quickly put together infrastructure that supports the growing technology, in specifically 5G. It's a tower, throw up a tower, multiple towers in that country, and they quickly are connected to the world and quickly can drive industry, business, commerce way faster than we are. I mean, think about how a lot of these third world countries already have 5G. I mean, they skipped from three, you know, 4G or 3G to 5G in a heartbeat because it just made financial sense to put up a 5G tower. And soon, who knows, 6G, 7G, they'll be able, they're so agile, they'll be able to make changes. So if looking at emerging markets and how beaten up they have been for the last, well, 10 years or so, it's creates a great opportunity. And we're starting to see emerging markets break out over and above their all time highs, as you'll see in the chart that I'm overlaying on my face here. So in closing, I love emerging markets, specifically emerging markets and infrastructure build out. I love the whole digital pay thing. It's, I mean, I'll do another video on why I think the present banking system is about gone, but when you have an emerging market country in a clean slate, you can quickly upgrade and get your country to where it needs to be so you can be competitive in the first world. And that's why I believe they, third world countries, will exponentially grow and catch up to us, the first world countries, and become ultra competitive.